Gunship Gang! Hello everyone, it is iRepublic Studs that today I bought the Lego Star Wars UCS Republic Gunship. Now this thing is insane. It's at 75309, has 3,292 pieces, retails for 350 US dollars, is ages 18 and up. This thing is insane. Now this is the second largest UCS set I have ever bought, the largest one being the UCS Falcon. I have not opened this thing up yet, but I want to just open it up and see what it's like to experience opening this box. It will be crazy. So I'm going to ask you to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and we're going to be getting right on into the experience and build up this whole entire set. I am so excited. So to make this one simple, we are going to just be opening it like this. And it is going to be pretty simple. The plan is just we're going to slide it all out. I don't, I haven't really watched many reviews on this, so I don't know what to expect. Whoa. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. Wait, there's an entire, there's an entire box in here. Whoa. Okay, so it looks like we have a lot of boxes over here. I'm going to open this one, see if anything interesting is in it. I'm assuming the instruction manual is in here. And then we're just going to open it like that, and then open this one, and then, yep, more bricks. So now the plan is to go live stream. I'm going to have a full hyper time lapse. It'll probably be 10 minutes, but I'll try to shrink it down as best I can. If you guys want to stay for that, you can. If not, then you could skip right ahead to the review. It's going to say box, and you could start right down there. We're going to have a whole thing. It's going to be insane.
to get into the review of the set 75309 Ryu CS Republic gunship. Now, first off, obviously, this has been pointed out by nearly everyone in the LEGO community, uh, but we do have the gunship, uh, you know, official title, uh, and there is that Imperial logo up there, which was a bit of an oopsie. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that's going to go up in value. I honestly don't. This is obviously a UCS set, as you see up there. Although something interesting to notice, and I've noticed this with a lot of the recent UCS sets, is they haven't been using the marker uh, for the UCS sets anymore, which is slightly disappointing. I have a, I am lucky enough to have a very nice looking box. You get a very simplistic black sleek design with the glow on the back. Now let's flip around to the back side of the box. And here's the back of the box. You get a better look at the gunship as well as usually I would say play features, but this would be more details and, you know, little specs. So you get some pictures from the movies. Uh, and you get all the different specs, like the little door that opens up, you get a look at the missiles compared to the actual in-movie ones, which I think is, that's a great angle to compare it to, because this model really looks like something out of a movie if it was not for the studs. Uh, you obviously get a look at the stand and everything. Now we'll take a look at the side box art. And you get this clean look at the gunship from this angle, and I think it looks really nice. Okay, so here is the instructions quickly. I'll let you know. It says, and the winner is, and it talks about how... Uh, you know, this was a fan-voted one, and all of that stuff, which is very cool. You get a thing from the designer, which is all neat and dandy, and then you will move over. You obviously get Meet the Model Design Team, uh, you know, the people who think all, all we remember is the Yellow Clone Trooper. And then it talks a bit about the Shroud of Darkness begun the Clone Wars has. Uh, if you would like to read that, you can. Uh, and then we'll move over. There is some other stuff in Spanish. You get a good look at all the, you know, interior design modeling of what the ship looks like, which is really cool, uh, you know, about this attack gun ship. And then it gives you some design details. A lot of this is in the designer interview with Solbrick Studios. Uh, and then you will move over. You get a brick separator, how to use uh, guide, and the origin of clone troopers, which is pretty sick. And, and then you move over, and it moves into all the instructions. I don't think there are even any promos at the back, just a feedback and win thing, and a clean black Star Wars logo with the Disney logo down here. Oof. So here are the minifigures. Now, obviously, they were a pretty big disappointment. You know, Mace Windu and the Clone Commander, not exciting. Um, but there is some little bits of interesting things about them, and I'll be going into them now. Obviously, I'll talk more about that in my thoughts, uh, but let's take a look at the Clone Commander. So here he is, all in yellow. Um, now, so a few interesting facts about this guy. This is actually Commander Pons, the commander that served alongside Mace Windu in the Clone Wars show. Uh, you'd look that up even on Wikipedia, or Wikipedia, just to make sure. Uh, but this is the same guy. Uh, first off, you'll notice he comes with the plain white 501st, le like the same legs as the 501st Trooper, but in white. I don't know why they're using the Clone Wars version of clone on the movie, you know, movie clone. This is a clone that appeared in the movies. Uh, maybe this is just going to be the look for all the clones now, which I am not a huge fan of. Uh, but hey, it is what it is. You move up. The torso obviously is all plain white minus those four little dots. He does come with the orangish yellow on his torso. Then you get the beautiful looking helmet there. Obviously it looks nice and dandy. Uh, it's a little different than the previous clone commander. And then you move over and he comes with a nice clone, uh, you know, face print with the new helmet nougat color. And you move to the back, and after you put that on, and there is nothing new uh, from the 501st Trooper. It looks pretty much the exact same. Now let's move into Mace Windu. Now this is certainly one of the more disappointing minifigures. Again, I think they would have been much better off putting, say, Yoda or a uh, pretty much anyone except for this. Like, if they had to do a Jedi, Yoda would have been a good one. Anakin would have been a good one. Mace Windu... Not entirely sure, but it's okay. Mace Windu's kind of cool. Um, you know, nothing entirely new about him from previous Mace Windus. Uh, we do get the new markings there. You'd see those little, like, sand markings. Uh, and this is not the only way to get Mace Windu now, by the way. There, he is in a book on Amazon for, like, 11 bucks. And, yeah, there are some on the back. Uh, but nothing else other n new, really, than that. He does come with his purple lightsaber. He's looking a little angrier than usual. Uh, and that those are the figures... Now, I think it is time to get into the build. So, this build is absolutely insane. One of the nicest LEGO Star Wars builds I've ever seen, period. And I think I would like to work my way from the bottom and then front to back. Um, so, we're going to start with the plaque. So, you do obviously get this nice structure that holds the gunship. And you get the plaque, which is the main thing. It is pretty wide and, you know, it's great for displaying it. 
Uh, and then you do get the area for the two minifigures to stand. And then you get the details if you would like. I will let you read those. You know, you get kind of the engineering, the low altitude transport. That's what it is in LAAT. Uh, it's 17.4 meters, all of this turrets and all the specs, which are all very cool. Um, and then I will show you how to put it on uh, the stand. So say you have the gunship off the stand like so. All you have to do is there is this little hole in here, and I'll show footage of that. And you just simply let it kind of lock into place, and like so, it just sits there absolutely perfectly. So we are going to be starting at the front, as I specified earlier, with the ball turret. Now I will say I absolutely love this design. I love the roundness of it. It is just great. You pretty much have them go wherever you want, and it's nice and simple. And then you can move the model over a little, and you will move to the front. Uh, where it is very nice and curvatured. I really love the curvature of this build. I think it looks great. You haven't really gotten a UCS set like this, uh, and you do get all that nice frontal curvature. It just That's the first thing you build, and it just is so nice to put together. The next thing are the front cockpit areas. Now, there are two of these, and they both come with seats, which work well and dandy. Um, they are not minifigure, you know, accessible. So these are locked in tight, so, I mean, I guess you could try to fit a minifigure, but it wouldn't look good, and they do not fit perfectly. Unlike another part of this set, which I'll show in a bit, um, but that is interesting. You do get these prints. This is a nice exclusive print here, and you move up, and you get that other exclusive print on the same pods as the ones used in the Jedi Interceptors. You also notice we get a little Republic logo. That is a giant or a Republic sticker on that piece. And then you move down, you see all this different stickering into this one area. Uh, this is like another landing area, and we could even adjust that further, and you will see a great look. Uh, there is an area actually where you could even see where the pilots will be entering, and I don't think many people have covered that, and it's a little hard to see, but there is a room and a door in there uh, that you can see very kind of easily, kind of not. It's very difficult to see. Uh, but it is there, uh, which I thought was a great detail by like. Next up, we have to take a look at the ball turrets. Now, these are certainly one of the more, you know, uh, unsturdy builds, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. You can lift up this top, actually, and it is a little difficult, and it's not really supposed to happen. But this certainly does fit your clone captain in there. It's kind of funny to look at. It's the same thing on the other side, and these two balls are printed, by the way. Same with the other side. The mechanics for this are pretty simple on both sides. You just kind of push it in and pull it out, and then you could also push it in like so. It is pretty easy to do. You know, nothing crazy. It doesn't, like, go in all the way, uh, or you can't really hide it or take it off, which is mildly disappointing because I think some people might want the option to take it off, uh, and you would really have to get involved with Technic to do so. Um, now, let's take a look at that interior. Now, in order to take a better look at the interior, you do have to move, to move the doors back, and you will just simply move them like so. It is a very simple Technic mechanism. A thing I noticed, note that I do not like, I wish the doors would close all the way, um, which they do not, which is kind of unfortunate. And then you also notice, and I'll point this out on this side, um, but we do get missiles attached to the door, which was a nice feature that did not have to happen, but is there, and I am very appreciative uh, for that, is the same missiles you'll see later on. But let's take a look, you know, in you will notice it is decked out all in red tiles, and there are blue studs and white everywhere. Uh, you also notice there is a little command tab, and there is also a little area where you could have uh, your characters supposedly hold on. Obviously, that wouldn't work well with a minifigure. I'll show demonstrate that. Clearly, you know, that's not really supposed to work. But a fun little fact about this interior is it is actually to scale with the action figures, the 3.75 inch action figures. There is the Phase 2 Cody, you know, obviously, because we were missing out on him. Uh, and what's even funnier is that this guy can even grab onto the handlebars. Like, look, the hand fits around it perfectly, guys. Like, this had to be planned. Like, they had to know what they were doing. You also notice there is this little, like, engine-type piece along the top, as well as this giant black bar that you see up there, which I guess is another area where you can hold on to if you're, say, a clone trooper. Now, I'd like to move to the top for a second. Obviously, we have the, um, little sticker piece here. This is a simple, like, you know, pretty simple just p sticker thing. And then you also notice you get the rotatable missiles. These do not pop up uh, like the other gunships, and you can't really fire them off. But they do look cool. I really think that's a great little feature. Uh, they did not have to do it. could have been solid. 
Um, but but they did make it all opposable, which I really, really appreciate. And that's just a fun little thing. And then we'll move down even further. We'll just rotate the camera down. And you do some get, get some of the engine type area. Uh, it's kind of hard to see from this angle, so we'll get nothing. And you do get these simple ones. They are nice and greebled. And then we'll move down even further to the ball turret of the back. This is the back turret. Um, you know, it looks all nice and dandy. Again, it can do pretty much every angle. Obviously, that happens. That, that tends to happen with these types of things. So you can't be too strenuous on it. But it can move around nice and dandy. Now, let's move to the back door. Now, looking from this angle, it is certainly not very appealing. Uh, it feels very boxy, and there's too many studs. I feel like they could have tiled this off a little better because it is literally all studs. Obviously, most people aren't going to be looking at it from this angle, um, but, you know, it is still a problem. Uh, either way, you can open this up, and there is a back door that does open. It is held on by two simple stud hoppers, uh, which is nothing crazy, uh, but still cool nonetheless. And it kind of even, look at, look at that, look at that. It just kind of slowly goes down. I don't know if that was intentional or not, uh, but it is happening either way. And then it just simply attaches back up. Very simple, very easy. And I will note while we're back here, some minor details you'd likely miss, but these two pieces back here, uh, they were very hard to put in. Uh, for me, at least, they were a little difficult, but they are still cool, and I'm really glad, you know, that would be a thing I wouldn't have even thought of. Uh, but obviously, when you're looking at pictures of the gunship, you'll notice it, uh, and you get that on both sides. Uh, now, let's take a look at the wings. Now, I'm going to be showing you the left wing because they are identical in every way, except they're opposites. Um, so first off, you do get the sticker piece right here, pretty nothing, uh, nothing exciting. Then you get these uh, pieces, this part of the bubble turret, uh, which they put on the wings uh, and is on uh, automated manually. And you can even look inside and you will see like some mechanics and stuff, which is really cool. I remember in the original gunship set, uh, that was a minifigure section, but I, obviously not here. Now let's move to the bottom side and you will notice that there is one just the same and then there are some missiles. Let's get a better look at those. They are pretty simple. They are technically built in there and they look all nice and dandy, but nothing again too insane. Now that was the full review of the UCS gunship. Now it is time to get into my thoughts of this set. Okay guys, so now it is time for my full thoughts on this $350 behemoth. Now, first of all, the great thing about this set is the look. Obviously, this is not a playset. This is not something you could, like, army build. You could have three of them, I could see, like, maybe if you really want to, but I do not see this as a thing you would get any more than one of. Um, obviously, here the big point of contention is the minifigures. I think it is excusable for them not to have put a Phase 2 Cody in. I'm willing to get past that. I'm willing to get past the fact that they didn't have a Jedi Bob. The thing that I personally am most upset about is there's no clone pilot. The captain and the pilots of these ships are pilots, and, and they didn't include that here, and I honestly don't know why. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't I don't get it. I, I know Lego says, oh, all you remember from this scene is that there was some yellow stormtrooper. Like, like, like what? It is the dumbest logic to me. I really don't accept that. That was certainly an unacceptable thing. I under, understand the other two. There should have been a pilot here, and if you were going to do any Jedi, Yoda is most iconic for being on the ship. Remember him s sitting on it and like, you know, flying around and all that. So yeah, obviously the minifigures are what keep this from being a truly perfect set, but it's still pretty darn close. Which is why I think I'm going to be giving this set a 9 out of 10. The value is fantastic. I know personally for me, uh, you know, when I've been seeing over the last few years these custom gunships scoring for $350, which is bananas to me. Uh, and, and this is just so the same price and you're getting so much more. I know custom sets are totally different uh, But that's been the only way you could really get a gunship without paying exorbitant amounts of money uh, and, and you know, this is the obviously closest thing we will get to it I also find it very funny how it's compatible with action figures So if anyone out there co like collects or plays around with action figures This might be a perfect thing for you to display them with I think that's just a fun idea if you collect the little smaller ones but yeah, those are my thoughts. I think it looks straight is one of the best looking Lego Star Wars sets, period. One of the best ones I will own, if not second best. But with that said, I hope you all enjoyed. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all the other things. I will see you all in the next one. Remember to peace out and stay awesome.